Greetings. Welcome to the Connect with Control-M webinar series. I'm Martin DeGastengrini. I've been with Control-M Support for 10 years, specializing in the web and cloud areas of Control-M. I'd like to especially welcome all the people joining us from around the world for today's presentation, Calling Web Services with Control-M. Let's check our agenda and see what we'll be doing today. We will be discussing some business uses of web services. Uh, we'll describe the technology of what web services are and then give an overview of the CM for web services and explain how it fits into the Control-M family of products. Then we will be demoing the CM for web services on the latest version 8 of the Control-M product, giving you some tips and tricks for using it. Finally, we will be getting to your questions and answering them. Please feel free to answer questions in the Q&A panel presentation during the presentation for answering at the end. Let's talk about some of the things companies need to get done these days, internally and externally. Some internal websites show current stock prices of the company and other companies' stock prices in their industry with a 10-minute delayed quote. If you have access to a web service that can provide that, you can integrate the, that information into the page and run updates on a regular basis to keep it current. IT can use an internally accessible web page to show how the network and systems are operating. A web page that shows the infrastructure statuses can help users and IT identify an issue and address it more quickly. For instance, VMware has a web service interface. You can use that potentially uh, to provide machine status updates on a periodic basis. Some other department almost inevitably has some information that you could leverage or that would provide business insight. One idea might be to approach them to provide that information as a web service. Once set up, it can operate with a minimal and manual intervention. Communication to customers can be enhanced by web services as well. If you have customers that might need to be aware of certain opportunities, you can gather current data from a web service and use it to trigger opt-in email notifications. For example, uh, if you have customers' zip code and email who have indicated they would like to be aware of your store openings in their area, and you have access to a web service that could return latitude and longitude from a zip code, you can target you could target email with an embedded, customized Google map tagged with a new store locations close to their address. Other uses might be for manufacturers who are increasingly requiring suppliers to provide transparency into their inventory and ordering process. And with that, you can keep just-in-time inventory at the needed levels. But any data that changes regularly and is needed would be a good candidate for a web service interface to allow access to it. Automating data, access to that data can save time, leverage people, and reduce errors. Let's see some more detail on the technology of web services. Web services are just a way of making a network call to request information or tell a server to perform an action. If you're familiar with how a web service works, that's the same concept as a a web server works, it's the same concept as a web service, except a web server service call is all done programmatically as opposed to manually with a browser. Some terms you're going to run, some terms you're going to run into when using web services are the WSDL. Uh, this is the most important part for us. It contains the location of the service, what the service expects as inputs, and what the data structure of the output will look like. Also, the file that contains the specific WSDL information for a web service is just referred to as a WSDL. XML, uh, it's the markup language standard used by web services to define its data structures. SOAP is a protocol that helped simplify calls to web services, allowing access from things like JavaScript. RESTful web services are an evolving attempt to simplify web service calls even further than SOAP did. UDDI, uh, the easiest way to think about this is as a yellow pages for WSDLs. 
and standard ports are used. Let's talk about an overview of the CM for Web Services. CM for Web Services is part of the Business Process Integration Suite from BMC Software. It's included along with the control module for Java and the control module for messaging. Control M can call to the standard UDDI, URL, and local WSDL file for accessing web services. We support standard and secure protocols for calling web services. And although it's easy to configure and use and get the information back from web services, uh, the CM for web services is a middleman providing the XML formatted output to the next job for control and processing. The data received, it's going to be somewhat raw, and some programming will be required to utilize the data. Let's see where the CM for Web Services fits into the Control M family of products. You configure a jo the job in the desktop or planning domain. The job gets ordered by the Control M server and submitted to the agent. The agent tells the CM for Web Services to call the service with particular inputs and waits for the XML formatted reply and provides that to the job for further processing. All right, let's talk about what we'll be doing in the demo. We will take a WSDL and define a profile for use in a web services job. Then we will define a job using that profile. Finally, we will run the job showing the XML output. All right, let me switch over. I'd like to take this time to remind everybody to enter questions into the Q&A panel for answering at the end. Here in the Control-M Configuration Manager, we're going to bring up the Profile Management. This will give you a listing and allow you to uh, enter new profiles for use in the jobs. It takes a second. What this is actually doing is going out to the agent to read the file and then providing you the list here. So let's create a new one. All right, your choices, after the connection profile name is a label used internally by Control-M. It will, so take that into consideration when naming it. Your choices for the WSDL source include the UDDI. As I mentioned, that's a yellow pages for WSDLs. So you would need to get information from the web developer or documentation from the provider to get information on the exact WSDL that you're going to want to choose to select the operation you're going to want to run. All right, and local file system. This would be where you copied a local file from either another machine using whatever process is good internally to your system. Excuse me. The WSDL can be saved from a web page after accessing it. So if you've got a browser on the agent, you can save it down that way, and that would be the local file system option. We will be doing the web service URL and testing it. Let's do that. And it's val validated. So we can use it in the job. Now let's go to the new V8 GUI. And show you that. For those of you who haven't seen it yet, I like it a lot. The more I use it, the more I like it. So let's check this out. This is a job defined earlier, and it'll look exactly like the one we're going to do. Uh, but I've already run it, so we have the output. And here's a 
Here's how easy it is to create a web service job. You can drag and drop it into here. Select an agent that contains the VM for web services. Here the web service attributes details tab will bring up the information specific to the web service definition. When we do the select account, what we're going to do is we're going to go out to the agent again. It will provide a list of all the accounts that you can select, and you'll choose one. So let's do that. All right, here's the one we created. Now in the select WSDL, if we had chosen the UDDI, then we'd be given a pick list of these to choose from. As it is, we have a choice of one. Uh, same with services. In this case, we're, the CM is actually going to go out to the WSDL, which holds the definition for all the services that are there. And it may give you multiple choices. In this case, we only have one. Same with operation. We're going to parse the, the CM will parse the WSDL file. It will present you the options of what you have. And here's a latitude and longitude from zip code. So let's use that. Um, we're going to use the load parameters. And it's required, requesting a string. If there were multiple parameters, we would continue to add those. and build up a list of these. So there's a zip code. Alternatively, you have the option of using parameters from an input file. In this case, you could either use, it could either be written from a previous program in Control-M and the, further up in the job stream, or you could even include auto-edit variables in that file so that they could get populated as needed and internally from Control-M without having to write another file. All right, the add SOAP header from file. This is in case you need any specialized SOAP information or any anything like that. Output parameters, your options for those. This is what uh, you can get the, you can either populate an auto edit or you can uh, use a URL style of file path. Just a minute. The auto edit would be global and could be accessed using the CTM var command after this job. Or, in our case, we'll be writing it to a file on disk so that it could possibly be used in the by the next program. All right, I'm going to cancel out of this because we've already created this job and ran it. So let's, and we'll, let's just go into here and show this again. Same information. Go ahead and order it, and switch to the monitoring domain. And I'd like to show you some things in the log. Here we see that it, in this case, is uh, returning an OS comp stat of 200. That's from the HTTP protocol. Uh, another possibility from the HTTP protocol, which we're all familiar with, is the 404. In this case, page not found. But in this case, uh, 200 is actually OK. So let's take a look at the output. As I said, it's somewhat raw. And it is in XML format, so it is structured. Uh, you, but as I said, you control M, CM for web services, is much more of a middleman than a, it's not going to come cooked and clean. You're going to need to have some programming behind it, after it to parse it and get the data you want and put it where you need it. But we allow 
as we, you see, the, we allow easy configuration and access to the information from the web service itself. All right. And that is the demo portion. And I would like to tell you about some tips and tricks now. So if the WSDL is URL-based, you'll want to copy it to the local agent drive you'll get faster response and you won't run into any network issues. And web services return XML by standard, not necessarily return codes. The example I showed did have an OS comp stat. You're not necessarily going to get that. The XML is, uh, may contain an error message and you may need to check for that. And you can do that in the steps tab or uh, the next job can check on it. If web service response does not match the response expected, uh, third-party tools for, like SOAP UI can give a, can go and parse the WSDL for you, verify it, and provide an input. Your local developer may have some other ideas or test cases that would be useful. Uh, RESTful web services do not require the CM for web services, and they can be implemented in Control-M with a standard contr command line job, and you just have to use wget or curl, and all right. Well, I'd like to thank you again. Uh, if you're for the interested and curious, uh, we recommend the www.w3.com website. It contains uh, standards for evolving standards for everything from web services through XML and HTML5. Uh, the next Connect with Control-M will highlight the Batch Impact Manager. Uh, previous recordings can be found on YouTube off of the user BMC software Control-M link. Uh, you will receive a survey. Please fill it out. Uh, we'd like to know what you think about the webinar series, the Connect with Control-M webinar series in general, this uh, webinar in particular, and future Connect with Control-M that you would attend, subjects that you would like, you would attend. All right, uh, I'd like to go to the question and answer section at this time. Uh, while we do that, I'm going to give you a list of recorded Connect with Control-M sessions that you can watch later. And as a call to action, I would invite you to explore the possibility of using web services to improve and expand your business. Thank everyone for joining, and thank you for the great questions. Uh, it's, I'll be happy to see you again, and uh, I'll probably be talking to you on the phone. Thank you. Take care.